Tyson Fury is fighting unheralded Tommy Boy, Tom Schwartz. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing if you want to become part of the gang gang. Notification gang. Please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We working. Now, the cat's out the bag. I made videos about it, but it's now official. Uh, they had a top rank card, Qbrat Pulev. BT Sports was there. Tyson Fury was on the, the telecast with them, and he confirmed that he's fighting against Tom Schwartz. I made a video about it. That was the rumor. This rumor is now an actual factual, you know, also corroborated by promoter Frank Warren, or at least his UK promoter. He's now with top rank ESPN distributing the fights on the U.S. soil. Frank Warren says on his verified page, <laughs> he says, it's official. Tyson Fury returns on the 15th of June against Tom Schwartz in his Las Vegas debut. You know, lineal heavyweight champion. They might as well just take that part out, you know, because that's a horrible. Fury versus Schwartz. Heavyweight, June 15th, Las Vegas, you know, top rank, Queensberry promotions. And <laughs> look at the, <laughs> they got AJ laughing. Hey, they, they clowning. This is an awful fight. This is just Twitter, people. You know, ooh, whoop de doo Money and promoters continuing to ruin the sport. Quote, we give the fight fans, or we give the fans the fights they want. Why is he fighting Schwartz? Seriously, Why? You can't go from Wilder to Schwartz. It's not Wilder or AJ. Then it has to be a genuine top five contender. Shout out to this casual hardcore. Excellent commentary. Dosser, you know, shit the bed, Frank. This is awful. You know, I mean, just <laughs> look at these comments. Was a big fan of Fury after messing up the rematch with Wilder by signing with Aram. I have lost interest. He may have got the money, but he won't get the big fights now he's on the ESPN. Shit matchup, Frank. Two steps forward with Wilder, then eight steps back with this joke of a fight. Saddest thing about this, it'll go 12 rounds and the Fury camp will continue to knock the level of their opponent's opposition. Dosser, you know, people going in, you know, they even put the Conor McGregor, who the fuck is that? Like, might as well be fighting me. Oh, wow. I need a taxi for the walkout to the ring. I'm that unfit. You know, he will probably be driving the taxi to be fair. Wow, they dog in this fight. What's this Snoop shit? <laughs> Why is that who? <laughs> Snoop, hey, nephew. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why they got Snoop? Who? Man, this is a bad look. Listen. Fair play to New Deal making loads of money. Fury deserves it. But this was meant to be the year for the big three. They all fought each other. Instead, all three are fighting. See, I can't even relate to that. When people start bringing up, this is Tyson Fury made the announcement. Wilder's fighting is mandatory, and Anthony Joshua's fighting. Uh, an undefeated guy, but at least Americans have heard of him, you know, and he's had some more solid, more known uh, opponents, Thomas Adamak and Gerald Washington. You know, he just fought Dog Bandino, who Kubrat Pulev just fought, and he's ranked in most of the sanctioning bodies. So you can't even compare Dominic Brazil or Gerald Big Baby Miller to who Tyson Fury is fighting. This is terrible, you know. And once again, Frank Warren and ESPN lied. They said that uh, they wanted a U.S. exposure fight, right? They wanted to build an exposure fight up to build his U U.S. presence, which we know to be a lie because he just fought on Showtime U.S. pay-per-view. And it did decent numbers considering that they were brand new to the pay-per-view um, circuit. And, you know, it's just a bad look for Tyson Fury. He claims he beat Deontay Wilder 10 rounds to two. And then you regress to this level of competition. Sure, the guy is undefeated, but he hasn't fought anybody. So, you know, 
it's easier to remain undefeated if you haven't fought any real level competition you know and then this type of little stuff the back and forth banter is like nobody believes what Tyson Fury is saying Wilder says stop being a cloud chasing hoe and um Tyson Fury responded is somebody a touch jealous deluded they sign me because they want you wow stop trying to promote yourself using me desperate times equals de desperate measures you will only get signed to be a workman hashtag Dosser. so you know he's doing all this like theatrics and stuff like that but you know he has the worst of the big three in terms of the fights you know and then he's saying stuff, Deontay Wilder, is that why ESPN gave me the $100 million deal and not you? What you mean is you're nothing without me, the Gypsy King, your big dosser, right? But like I said, at the end of the day, this is not a, a respectable fight. Like I said, the only thing, the, this, this fight is so bad that to promote it, you notice they keep mentioning the guy's height. First of all, I seen a little bit of like we'll, we'll, I'll take a look at some of the highlights, but I seen some clips on YouTube of the guy, and he actually he's listed as six six, but he didn't look six six. I'm pretty tall. I want to stand next to him, so I want to see how tall he is. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't even really look. Maybe it's just his body type. I don't know. Pause. But he didn't really. To me, he didn't really look from the video. He didn't really look like he was that big. But he's listed as six six. This fight is so, like I said, his opponent is so unknown and unheralded and no one really knows anything. No significant names. I'm talking about none. Like, not even like, you know, Manuel Chars up in there or the guy that Charles Martin fought, Glaskov, and you know, nothing. You don't see anybody that you can recognize. I, you know, I already went through that on his box rec because naturally, um, the first thing you check is probably like a box rec Wikipedia when you haven't heard of somebody. And the heavyweight division is now popping. You know, you got some action. So to not know a heavyweight. What the fuck? Um, sorry. The heavyweight division is like it's easy to differentiate and see the tiers, like where everybody is at and things like that. You know, you have either the newcomers and the prospects, these things. You got the big three. And then the people just under it, the Dillian Whites and the Luis King Kong Ortiz. And then, you know, some up and coming sluggers and good fighters, Tony Yoka and Daniel Dubois and Joe Joyce, etc. And then you have your your worker journeyman type, you know, so, you know, the tier system. So the heavyweight di division is not really hard to to decipher and see who's who and where where everyone stands. And, you know, to pick somebody from germany that hasn't fought outside of germany you know it's just this is really laughable so let's take a look at the opponent you know look through wow let me see, let me see what are you talking about who the fuck is he fighting though who is that guy is that Matt Damon? Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> Who is? Hey, bro. Hold on. He's missing most of the shots. Hey, what? First of all, he he sm. Oh my god. First of all, Tom Schwartz. Oh my god. First of all, look, look, okay. I, let me let me slow down. This video is a highlight video. The video has 55 likes and 34 dislikes. Here's what they think about you. Second of all, if you look at this, he's so in a rut. Like, he's not experienced. You could tell. Like, his technique is lacking. He's in such a, a rush to try to hurt it. I mean, he thinks he got his guy hurt. He's smothering his own work. He's in so close, and he's just, like, flailing punches. And then, if you watch this again, he, like, does a Broner Madonna hump. And he humps the guy into the ropes. That didn't look like a knockdown. It looked like he thrusted. Man, what is it? Look. Look. He missed a bunch of. Look. He just humped him into the ropes, bro. Who is Tyson Fury fighting? Hold on. Look. All this shit was missing. The guy's like, maybe he is rocked or hurt. 
and he's trying to hold on, and the dude doesn't know how to create space and separation to get this guy who's not even clinching properly, and he's just really trying to push him, but he's missing a lot of those shots. Look, but watch this hump. This is a hump. I know a pelvic thrust when I see one. Pause. And then the ref starts counting. What What the fuck was... Hey, bro. I don't know why they put this... Oh, my God. This Guns and Roses sound check on this. See, he's missing. Look, he missed. <laughs> Who is this right now? He's like, fuck. The guy just went. Who is that? Why is he swinging like? He's literally, <laughs> the guy's falling down. He wasn't, it didn't even look like he was connecting. Hey, bro. Oh, oh, oh my God. Look, that punch mitt, watch. And he just lost balance and failed. Man. Who is this dude? Hold on, hold on. This is the same Matt Damon motherfucker from the beginning. So he fought two people. I how you have a highlight reel in this? <laughs> it's the same two dudes. Like I'm expecting a highlight reel, like like twenty some fights or some. Oh shit, that that was good. But the guy was wide open for it, and he and jumped right back up like that. He, the guy. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, maybe it's late. I think it might be late, yo. It looked like the guy lifted up his chin like that to get hit. Look, the guy, he has his chin all the way up. Watch. Look. Chin is up. Watch. Oh, my, oh my God. Of course, you, of course, that's gonna hurt. This motherfucker, this chin up. Tom Schwartz. Anyway, bro, I, I'm not watching this shit anymore. Um, <laughs> the Gypsy King, Lineal Fury, Lineal Fury is, it, bro. This is an indication that he knows the power of Wilder, the vibranium. His family member already said they don't want him to rematch. Frank Warren, top rank, Bob Arum, they trying to save Tyson Fury. They're trying to get him ready as possible. See, this is the thing is, Tyson Fury, he got a little too big for his britches. He was lineal champ, beat Klitschko. He felt ostracized, felt the type of way, felt he wasn't getting the respect he deserved. So, you know, he started partying and doing the coke and got banned, and then he took three years off, roughly. He's seen AJ, there was a void because AJ and Eddie Hearn was giving Wilder the runaround. As a result, he said, I, you know, I can't let the UK go out like that. I'm the Gypsy King, I come from a long line of families. So he stepped up with Wilder. I think he thought on the outside, this man, Wilder, you know, shit was sweet. Wilder, the first couple rounds were pretty, pretty competitive, but then Tyson found a groove, was outboxing Wilder. Later in the fight, Wilder scored a knockdown, and then he scored a brutal knockout slash knockdown. You know, no one thought he was going to get up from the 12th round. That has worried Tyson Fury, his promoter. There's a lot of money invested with Tyson Fury. They're not saying the actual figure, but he stands to gain a lot of money. That, to me, has everybody shook. Now they're trying to let Tyson Fury do what he should have did in the beginning that people were saying that he needed to do. 
which is take proper tune-ups and then start challenging. But he jumped the gun, got too big for his britches, jumped the gun and said, you know, you know, I'm the gypsy king, I'll fight everyone. And then almost getting knocked down the 12th, it was a little too close for comfort. So now he's going back to what he should have been doing, you know, what people were telling him to do to begin with, which was take more tune-ups before you fight Wilder. He didn't listen the first time, narrowly escaped in the 12th round, and then Wilder found something. He knows Wilder's power is real. Post-fight Tyson Fury says that Deontay Wilder is the most fiercest puncher in heavyweight history, and I felt that tonight and different stuff like that. That's what he said. So we know Wilder's power is, is the real deal. We know it's for real. And he knows it's for real. And since he narrowly escaped, you know, he wants more time before he goes. So him or his handlers, whoever you want to blame it on. But either way, this is a duck move from Tyson Fury. He's fighting, you know, uh, a no-namer who looks like he has, from what I've seen, poor technique, needs to work on his accuracy, and he's inexperienced. And they're selling it based on the fact that he's undefeated. You know, Bob Arum, oh, he's undefeated. They're selling it. If you notice, listen to the promotion. I've never heard a heavyweight fight, and they keep telling you about how tall the guy is. There's a lot of heavyweights tall. I'm tall. You know what I'm saying? And that's one of the selling points, because they know this can't be justified. So the only selling points that they're saying is like, oh, yeah, he's young. He's undefeated. And he's 6'6". You know, like as if that means anything. You could be 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, experience that you know that's what ultimately skills and this tom schwartz no disrespect to him because he didn't do anything he's just seizing the opportunity you know listen to brendan schaub with the uh tyson fury signing with uh espn and leaving this deontay wilder fight up in the air no one had any idea because now i don't feel there's no i'm going to espn showtime and while we do that we had an agreement with Miguel smiley with demarcus to read this the biggest fight in boxing what happened to that I always think Tyson Fury is a guy who, he's not motivated by money, he's motivated by being the best heavyweight of all time. The only way to be the best heavyweight of all time is by fighting Deontay Wilder next. That's it. There's no other plan. You don't go over to ESPN and fight fucking bums we don't care about. You don't avoid everyone like Anthony Joshua's team has been doing. You don't do that to be the best of all time. Wow. He says you don't jump. See, Brendan Shaw, shout out to Brendan Shaw below the belt make sure you guys subscribe and check it out on showtime you know he says you don't you know dip out after this and you know leave people hanging you know yo-yo in suspension suspended motion you know and dip out to espn do what joshua's team and give the runaround to this man and you don't go to espn to fight bums wow let me see the date on that so brendan schaub posted this february 27th Now, you know, about a month later, we see who Tyson Fury actually is fighting, and it's Tom Schwartz. And, I, you know, I don't like to call fighters a bum on my channel, but he's inexperienced. He got the assignment knowing that, like like I said, it's a problem if it's a heavyweight division, and I report boxing, and I cover boxing. I went to Wilder's press day with um, Dominic Brazil. I've covered a bunch of fights i covered wilder fury you know i've covered all these heavyweight fights and i've literally never heard of tom schwartz until his name was linked to fight tyson fury that's the reality of it so you know as far as i'm concerned this is more vindication for wilder that people don't want to fight him he and luis king kong ortiz and he holds something over ortiz because he beat ortiz by stoppage so definitely wilder's the king And then I would say the runner-up would be Luis King Kong Ortiz. It's apparent to me people do not want smoke with these two gentlemen, you know, especially Wilder, because the, the thing that's uncanny in this world with all this money being thrown in boxing is this man is one of two ways to get a belt in the heavyweight division. Not a lineal championship, something you did, you know, three years ago, but an active belt, pay sanctioning fees, a world title you know where you're sanctioning um you're paying and it's the respected wbc a lot of lineage in the sport roberto durant you know i'm not gonna go through everyone who had the wbc at a point in time floyd but you know it's a respected belt and organization 
and this man has it. So him and Josh were the only guys with these active sanctioning fee belts that that are recognized, you know, universally without any exception. And he can't seem to get a fight. People pull out of rematches. AJ hasn't come to the table or, you know, really offered a percentage, was offering him flat fees and DAZN offering him 40 million, 100 million flat fees and stuff like that. This is insane because he actually has one of the, it's like Legend of Zelda, he has one of the actual keys right here. I'm glad that, you know, I picked this at the right time. Sophia, the green belt, he has one of the keys to immortality in the heavyweight division, what people should be striving for, you know, legacy things like the WBC belt and can't get a fight. Either people are failing drug tests, ducking him, you know, making negotiations complex. And I think it's because of this, you know, dropping fools and destroying them and stuff like that. And all that little cutesy stuff, Tyson Fury posts and things like that. I think he remembers this scene in this moment. And as a result, him or his team or whoever, they're not in a rush. They're trying to ready. That's why Bob Arum did an interview, an exclusive with World Boxing News. And he specifically said that the plan is to try to rematch Wilder, not this year, but February 2020 which is bullshit and this is what happens Tyson Fury clearly knew the implications that signing to ESPN would have and you know there are people like even Andre Ward he he tweeted when Tyson Fury um, was signed to ESPN and he works with ESPN and even him he said oh there's no reason this fight can't happen it needs to happen the rematch but the powers that be at ESPN have a totally different outlook because it seems like they're trying to stall this out. They want Wilder to maybe take a little bit of wear and tear, Wilder to fight on ESPN to help boost what they got going on, and they want Tyson Fury to recover from that 12th round and you know get his confidence all the way back and you know test things out, test the waters, dip his feet in before he jumps back into that that ocean or lake. You know, Alabama, they got swamps. And they know that Deontay Wilder is the swamp thing. They don't want Tyson Fury. There's all kinds of gators and crocs in that water, in that southern water. And they don't want Tyson Fury to have to experience that again, you know, ill-prepared. They don't want this to be the scene. They're trying to pay Tyson Fury $108 million. They don't want this to happen again, which is precisely why Tyson Fury is fighting someone that none of us have even heard of in America. And they're billing it as a U.S. exposure fight. It's not an exposure fight because an exposure fight would be one that, you know, he will get a lot of credit for and respect for. At at the moment, you got guys like F.A. Ajagba, who just fought Amir Mansoor. He's fighting better competition than Tyson Fury. And he got like, whatever, nine pro fights. And he's only 24, 25. So this is, you know, this is a bad look for Tyson Fury. The rumors were that he would fight guys like Joseph Parker. The rumors were that he might fight Dillian White. The rumors were that he might fight Oscar Rivas, who knocked out Brian Jennings. There were even rumors that he might fight Brian Jennings, who is signed with top rank, coming off a knockout loss. And guess what? All of those fights would have been more credible, more accepted by the public, and Tyson Fury literally chose the worst option. Because even though Brian Jennings is coming off a loss, and that's not the fight I would prefer to see, and I don't think that's right to put um, Brian Jennings, it would still be a more credible foe because we've seen Jennings. We know what he's about. We've seen him against Klitschko, Luis King Kong Ortiz, Oscar Rivas, etc. Oscar Rivas beat Q Brad Pulliff in the amateurs and beat Andy Ruiz Jr., who was signed to top rank in the amateurs. A lot of you don't know that. And he's a Colombian puncher. Again, he just knocked out Brian Jennings. We know who Dillian White is. We know he comes to, to, to slug. But once again, this is evident that everything that Tyson Fury's team is saying, his camp is saying about, oh, I won 10 rounds or two, they don't feel like that. They know the fight was close because why wouldn't you just jump right in there? You normally run towards the rematch. If you felt you got robbed, you got idiotic fans who are saying, oh, yeah, Tyson Fury's fighting Tom Schwartz because he got robbed with Deontay Wilder. What type of bullshit is that? If you felt you got robbed and you're better than somebody, wouldn't you wanna make a lot of money and 
beat that person, embarrass them, and settle the score. Like, Andre Ward defeated Kovalev, took his belts. He could have hit the highway and then started fighting other competition. But the fight was close. It was perceived as close by media and fans. So he did the honorable thing, and he rematched Sergey Kovalev, and then he knocked him out, and then ended up retiring. Mayweather, they said the Maidana fight was close. Could have been a draw. Could have went either way. Castillo fight with Mayweather. Mayweather, his very next fight, rematched him. But if you have the complexion for the protection, i.e. Lomachenko, i.e. Tyson Fury, i.e. Gennady Golovkin versus Daniel Jacobs, Tyson Fury versus Wilder, Lomachenko versus Salido, it appears to me that it is accepted by old media to just move on with your career and act like that, woo, we narrowly escaped, wipe the sweat off your face, and then move on or try to ready yourself to eventually have the rematch instead of doing an immediate rematch, which black fighters have to do, you know? Sugar Ray Leonard lost to Roberto Duran, lost. If he would have lost twice to Roberto Duran back to back, that could have been it for Sugar Ray Leonard. You know, that would be very damaging. But Sugar Ray Leonard being the true competitor that he is and was, he rematched Dur uh, Duran, hands of stone, eight months later and made him no mas. This is despicable what they're doing with Tyson Fury. And I don't see how they're expecting the U.S. to embrace this. I'm not covering this fight. I don't care who's mad. I don't know where they said it's at the Thomas and Mack Center. You know, it needs to be at the Thomas and McDonald's because this is a small fight. This is a fight no one's asking for. I'm not going to this fight live because this is a business. And in business, you have to make business decisions. That is not enough of a fight to lure me out of bed and, you know, justify the cost that it will cost for me to leave California you, when you should be fighting this man that you see on the screen. So, you know, these plans, like with ESPN, what they just did here, jumping in the mix, preventing the rematch, you know, trying to give Tyson, buy Tyson Fury time to get better and to recover and stuff, they could end up backfiring because this is not a good look. Tyson Fury is getting immense heat. And it's sad because he just came from an instant classic where some people gave him a lot of credit and even had him winning some people. They, some people even thought he won. And this is your behavior. You, you're saying you won and you're fighting Tom Schwartz. And you criticize people like Anthony Joshua and Wilder, call them Dossers and Shithouse, and you're fighting someone worse than both of their opponents, Gerald Miller and Dominic Brazil. Somebody, you know, do I, do we really have to play this stupid clip again? Like, who is this guy? That music ain't doing it no justice either. Look. This guy look out of shape that he fighting. Man, I I never seen no highlights like that, you know. And like I said, they try to judge. Oh, he's undefeated and he's six six. I don't care if he's six fourteen. Nobody knows him. This is not, you know, you're not gonna convince me and fool me. And then meanwhile, Wilder's fighting guys like Brazil and you know people are taking. Man, Wilder is the true champion. Wilder's the lineal champion. And you know Tyson Fury's parading around like he's um like he has. A belt that Wilder or Joshua has you know as far as I'm concerned Tyson Fury can't can't say anything at this point about Wilder or Anthony Joshua because his event is the smallest and again I don't see how they expect to build Tyson Fury in the US and make him a star or build the anticipation for a Deontay Wilder rematch and this is what we're receiving from Tyson Fury so you know people can say whatever but um, this is very disappointing. That's, that's all that could be said. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego, signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing. Yeah.